The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, a prop plane crash. I heard glass break, I heard metal bend. And the pilot who walked away from it all. He just looked like he just walked out of the flames. See his miraculous story of survival. His head was swollen twice the size and he was burned really, really bad. Then, a young Muslim starts having panic attacks. I thought I was gonna die. And begins to question her faith. I felt darkness, like a dark cloud over my head. Watch what brought her peace on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Here's the quote, higher prices, threats to American jobs. That's what members of Congress are saying are, uh, will be the fallout from President Trump's new tariffs on Europe and Canada. Still, some economists believe the president is just trying to hold these nations accountable and force them to negotiate fairer deals. Jennifer Wishon has more from Washington. For President Trump, it's a campaign promise kept, cracking down on trade imbalances that hurt the U.S. economy. Today, new tariffs on steel and aluminum from America's allies, Canada, Mexico, and the European Union. Let me be clear. These tariffs are totally unacceptable. Back in March, the president gave these nations more time to negotiate, but with no deal, he's keeping his deadline. I believe the European Union just thought, well, you know, it's surely this is another president, American president, bloviating over trade, and in the end, nothing's going to happen. We've been taken advantage of by the world. That's not going to be happening anymore. Countries threaten retaliation by targeting American products, ranging from blue jeans to toilet paper and peanut butter to pork. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue tells CBN News the U.S. is ready. We're working on a package and there are, there are authorities here within the Secretary of USDA in order to uh, utilize uh, uh, programs and funds that would support farmers if they are harmed and damaged by trade disputes. The news caused the Dow to dip 250 points. Here in Washington, a number of Republicans criticized the president's move. At this time of economic growth, the last thing we should be waging is a trade war, Illinois Republican Congressman Randy Holtgren writes. But some economists say members of Congress allowed huge trade imbalances to rack up. They're falling prey to the lobbyists that are coming out of the woodwork uh, on this. French President Emmanuel Macron calls the president's move illegal, but Mexico's economic minister says he doesn't see a trade war coming. The tariffs come just as Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross leaves for China to try and defuse a trade war with the world's second largest economy. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington. Well, judging, judging from the latest employment numbers released today, unemployment doesn't seem to be a problem at all in America anymore. Uh, it's the lowest uh, unemployment rate in, in, in decades. And you look at this and go, well, do we need to address these trade imbalances? Uh, the president may be onto something. In other news, the canceled summit between President Trump and North Korea's Kim Jong-un might happen after all. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon. A high-ranking North Korean official visits the Oval Office today to hand-deliver a personal letter from Kim Jong-un to President Trump. Thursday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo told reporters there's been good progress after all-day talks between the two sides. Meanwhile, summit preparations continue in Singapore and in meetings between North and South Korean officials. While well, Iranian and Hezbollah forces are preparing to leave southern Syria near the border with Israel. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reports the move comes after Israel's defense minister visited Moscow for discussions on Syria. Both Russia and Iran are major allies of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Israel wants Iranian forces out of Syria altogether and reportedly has bombed several Iranian military sites there. Well, as Israel marks its 70th anniversary, it's also celebrating the discovery of one of the greatest biblical archaeological treasures of all time, the Dead Sea Scrolls. As CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell reports, those scrolls still offer amazing revelations today. While this may look like a box of garbage, it's truly part of an ancient treasure. In our storeroom, we have a lot of 
boxes with fragments that, as far as I could tell, had never been sorted, had never been investigated. Oren Abelman of the Israel Antiquities Authority found it during work to digitize and publish the Dead Sea Scrolls. It looked like it was garbage. It didn't look like it was anything here. You couldn't really see anything with your own eyes. This is a lab where experts examine fragments from the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered 70 years ago. Standing here is like hearing the echoes of Bible times from 2,000 years ago. I worked on comparing the handwriting on these, frag on these fragments that I found to other manuscripts. I very quickly started finding matches between the handwriting of the scribes. Abelman used advanced imaging technology to take another look at 82 fragments he couldn't read before. 12 had enough text to work with. Probably the best example that I had is this fragment here, where the word that I read there is a zamra in Hebrew, which means a song. Based on the handwriting of the scribe, I could tell that this fragment belonged to what's called the Great Psalm Scroll. Another fragment indicated an additional scroll might exist. Panina Shore heads up the Dead Sea Scrolls unit. She sees a special connection between the scrolls and Israel's 70th birthday. On the eve of the 29th of November, uh, when they were voting at the UN for the partition plan, the son of Professor Sukenik was counting the votes on the radio while Professor Sukenik was sitting at the desk with one of the first scrolls, it was Hodeo scrolls, and realized that he was holding a scroll from Second Temple times. And he said, what could be more symbolic than as we're voting for the creation of the new state of Israel to hold in my hands a manuscript 2,000 years old. 70 years later, the Dead Sea Scrolls are still revealing new facts from their ancient past. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the Dead Sea Scrolls Lab in Jerusalem. Thanks, Chris. Gordon, these are really amazing discoveries. They are, and uh, the, here's the importance of it. The Old Testament that you and I read today, uh, what these scrolls prove is the text is the same as what was being read in the time of Jesus. Uh, that is incredible. And in Israel today, literally on a weekly basis, you're seeing archaeological proof of the truth of the Bible. Uh, that it's an historical document. Uh, they just found uh, a bulla referencing the prophet Isaiah, uh, the things that are coming out proving Hezekiah, uh, proving the, the, the line of David uh, in Jerusalem, Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. It's, it's incredible what's happening in Israel today, and there's a whole story of Israel that you won't see in the news. The news wants to play up the number of suicide attacks or the terrorist attacks or uh, all the nations, the number of times the UN uh, condemns Israel. But there's another story, how Israel is being a light to the nations. And we've produced a documentary on that, the humanitarian work that Israel is doing around the world. It's called To Life, How Israeli Volunteers Are Changing the World. And these are wonderful stories. In the middle of all this condemnation, here Israel is, a tiny nation just the size of New Jersey, but they're doing humanitarian work in over 140 countries around the world. Uh, th these are uh, facts since 1980, 140 countries around the world. In this DVD, you'll go inside the humanitarian work. We had embedded video teams, and so it's a you are there presentation of what they're doing, how they're reaching out with humanitarian concern, compassion, how they're changing the world. In the middle of all the condemnation, Here's Israel. If you want it, uh, it's yours for a gift of $10 or more. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Up next, they play a critical role for the FBI at crime scenes. But these G-men aren't special agents. They're chaplains. When you're dealing with people who are intentionally evil, you need to be intentionally spiritual. Hear how the FBI chaplains are helping our nation's top law enforcement agency when we come back. Well, in the aftermath of a terrorist attack, investigators often see horrific scenes. And that's why a special team of spiritual counselors is on call. 
CBN's national security correspondent Eric Rosales tells us more about the FBI chaplains. September 11, 2001, a day when terrorists hijacked four airplanes to use in suicide attacks to kill nearly 3,000 people. Those who lived through it remember the carnage like it was yesterday, some 17 years later. It's chaos initially, you know, because it was completely unexpected. Steve Davis works for the FBI, but not as an agent. He's an FBI chaplain. He was first on the scene after the plane crashed into the Pentagon on September 11th. Dealing with people that, that were dealing with the unthinkable, you know, whether it was, you know, the bodies of children on the plane, uh, dealing with the human remains, that takes a toll on a person. After 19 years on the job, Davis says he's seen the spiritual battle between good and evil. In federal law enforcement, you're dealing with people who are intentionally evil, and that's a whole different breed. And when you're dealing with people who are intentionally evil, you need to be intentionally spiritual or find some means of neutralizing it because evil is, it's not just toxic, it's corrosive. To help overcome that evil, the department has 130 FBI chaplains scattered throughout the nation. They are part of a volunteer crisis intervention team that provides spiritual first aid to FBI agents often working chaotic scenes with mass casualties, like last year's Las Vegas shooting. Talking with the person, helping them just say what they need to say, trying to give them a bottle of water, uh, if they want prayer, praying with them, uh, meeting them where they are. I mean, that's. You know, that's what Jesus did. He met us where we are and became like us in all things except for sin. Chaplain Davis says it's all about spiritual balance. The FBI first added chaplains in 1991 after employees involved in shootings and other gruesome investigations asked for support beyond mental health professionals. I will try to go into the, the local field office once a week and basically be present. It's not just major crisis situations where chaplains are used. They're also inside each of the field offices across the country and have the same security clearance as an agent. They provide spiritual guidance when employees are facing difficult situations and personal tragedies in their private lives. Just, you know, kind of tenderize the environment to the fact that there's, there's someone here who cares and who cares not only about the, the personnel, um, knows what's happening in the field, but also caring about their family and, and uh, you know, who they are as a person. The Bureau understands that all of its employees are human and have all of the problems everybody else does, plus all of the problems that come along with the job. Chaplains say most of their counseling happens months after a crime scene clears. They say their reward comes in helping these people realize the difference they are making. God is on the side of justice, and because God is on the side of justice, those who are in the Bureau uh, in the Department of Justice are, are enforcing and are the peacemakers for God. I'm glad the, the Bureau realizes we have more than just minds and bodies, but we have a, a heart and a human spirit. Why do you do it? It's a calling. I mean, no other reason. There is absolutely no reason to deal with the stress and the problems other than a calling and uh, an equipping, a sense of compassion. FBI chaplains say the role of law enforcement has changed so much over the years. Agents are taught to uphold the Constitution and protect America. That means keep us free and safe at the same time. A stressful and dangerous job where spiritual guidance from chaplains can make a big difference. Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. Well, there's a side of the FBI you won't see on any other newscast. Uh, but here we want to bring you that story and show you the struggle that these agents go through. Uh, the FBI certainly has been criticized in the, over the past year, uh, but here to understand what they go through when they're investigating uh, these horrific tragedies, what does that mean? Uh, for them to reach out and say, we need counseling, we need help, we, ne we need more than just mental health professionals, we need spiritual advice as to what to do with the manifest evil we're, we're seeing on a regular basis. Uh, realize people can be traumatized uh, in a variety of ways. You can be traumatized just hearing about the story. Uh, imagine if you're on the scene investigating uh, and looking at the carnage. Uh, what would that do to you? Uh, so let's pray for our FBI agents. Let's pray for those who are our first responders. Let's pray for 
those all who are trying to protect us as a culture, as a society. And what a wonderful thing that chaplains are volunteering in huge numbers to say, yes, I'll go in there too. Uh, I'll be with the agents who are on the front lines. What a wonderful thing for them to do. Tara? Well, coming up, a young woman who suffered from crippling anxiety attacks. Imagine you see a car about to hit you that's not slowing down or trying to stop. It was just like that, but all the time. Hear how she found peace overnight. Giselle Catree suffered from debilitating panic attacks. As a result, she lived in fear. Her situation at home only made things worse. Giselle tried finding peace within her Muslim faith. Instead, she found it in a place she didn't expect. Everything that we did and everything that we believed built on that foundation of knowing who we are as Muslims in America. Giselle Catree grew up in a family who demanded strict adherence to the Quran and Islamic faith. For her, it was the only way to earn her parents' love. I believe that staying true to Islam was something that my parents and I uh, would bond over. If I did, as they requested for me to do, like going to the mosque with them and, and participating in Ramadan fasting, it would bring us closer. But none of those things brought Giselle's family closer together. In fact, her parents fought constantly. Sometimes I would wake up and I would have to leave the house with my mom in the middle of the night. I could go to bed thinking everything's fine and wake up the next morning and it was disaster. As for Giselle, her prayers to Allah offered little comfort. Allah seemed just really distant from me and didn't really feel as though I was being listened to. I felt more of like I was going through the motions, not really feeling anything in return from God, any love or support or hope. And I wanted that peace that people keep talking about um, that Islam represents, and I didn't ever feel that. When Giselle was a senior in high school, her father ended the marriage, and her mother started a new family. After I went through all that with my family, I just kind of felt like I wasn't worthy of any affection or love. And so I looked for it for my parents and didn't get it. And um, it kind of was a reminder, hey, Giselle, you're not, that, you're not that great. If you were great, your family wouldn't have left you behind. The thought of the future, even the thought of tomorrow, the very next day would just bring me into a panic because I just never knew what was gonna happen. During college, she started working part-time at a private school. By then, Giselle's anxiety was triggering debilitating panic attacks. Imagine you see a car about to hit you that's not slowing down or trying to stop. It was just like that, but all the time. I thought I was gonna die. And my heart rate would just increase. Um, I would start sweating and just, I felt darkness, like a dark cloud over my head. During those times, it wasn't a law that gave Giselle comfort. It was the school's administrator, Connie, who was a Christian. Whenever I would have panic attacks at work, she would pray with me. I would feel a lot of peace. And I never felt that way when I finished praying my Islamic prayers. I was like, what is Miss Connie doing? What does she have that I don't have? Whatever it is, I want it. Connie invited her to church. But what Giselle saw and heard there wasn't what she expected. During that service, I learned about atonement, how Jesus died for our sins. As a Muslim, I didn't really even understand why Jesus had died. It was just kind of like, hmm, maybe this is true. It was kind of like a something, it gave me something extra to think about. Parts of the Quran were already wrong about what Christians believed. Um, it wasn't representing Christianity in its truth. It just kind of made me question a lot, a lot more. Giselle wrestled with her doubts. A few days later, she had the worst panic attack she'd ever experienced. I was like, maybe I should try what Miss Connie did. Maybe I should try, try praying. So I started off, you know, praying like she did. I tried to model her prayer and say some of the words that I remembered her saying. When I did that, I remember seeing this huge flash of light in front of my face. And it was kind of like when you close your eyes and you look at the sun, that orangey glow and feeling an overwhelming, huge wave of just peace and love. 
and I fell immediately asleep, and sleep was the last thing on my mind. When she woke up the next morning, Giselle opened a Bible she had received as a gift and began reading it front to back. What I found in there was just so much peace, and Isaiah 49, it mentions how God is so loving that even if a mother forgets um, about their child or abandons their child, that God will never abandon you and that your name is written on His hand. And I very much identified with that. And knowing that God loved me and um, cared about me in that way, that was something unique to me that I'd never even had any sort of inkling about. So. God really showed up when, um, when, he, when I needed him the most. So, Over the next few weeks, Giselle studied and compared sources until she was convinced that Jesus is the Son of God. I really came to the knowledge of, okay, Jesus claimed to be God, and if this is true, what are the implications of that? The resurrection isn't just mentioned in the Bible. The crucifixion isn't just mentioned in the Bible. There's historical accounts outside of the Bible. That really resonated with me. And knowing that there is history behind it tells me that there's truth in that. And I just said, God, I accept that you are who you say you are. I accept that you're Jesus and I accept that you are God. And I am sorry for the things that I've done that have hurt your heart. Um, I'm just so glad that you've brought me to the knowledge of who you are. And I accept you as my God. And that was the day that you know, after that, never again panic in any sort of way. Never again. Today, Giselle shares her new faith with confidence. I want everything that I do and I say to represent Him. And that gives me such an amazing purpose in life because I'm God's representative here. I get to be His hands and feet and show other people what God's like. And just like Miss Connie showed me the love of Jesus through her actions and through her prayers with me, I can now do that for other people. Giselle also says, knowing God cares for her has changed everything. Instead of me being fearful for tomorrow, I embrace it and I um, am running into it. I can no longer think that I'm worthless because if my name is written on God's hand, as Isaiah 49 mentions, then that means that He cares immensely about me and He's always thinking about me. So I need to always think about Him. <laughs> He is always thinking about you. He has many thoughts. The psalmist says, many, O oh Lord, are your thoughts towards us. Uh, they're more than can even be numbered. He loves you that much. He loves you infinitely. And he's loved you so much, he went to the cross. He inscribed your name in his palms on the cross. And he said, I'll do it for you. Now, some of you, like Giselle, you're going, well, how do I know? How, how do I get proof of it? Uh, she went on a journey uh, to prove to herself intellectually that Jesus lived in history. Uh, she wanted references outside of the Bible. But what all started that was her direct encounter with him. When she says, well, I'll pray the way uh, that, that wonderful woman at work prays. I'll, I'll pray that way. I'll try to remember her words. And then I'll close my eyes. And Jesus showed up and gave her the peace that she was looking for. Here she is in the middle of a panic attack. She prays. Jesus comes. And she falls asleep. Next morning, she wakes up and starts on a journey. I need to find out what this is. And it, is it true? But it started with that experience. So for you, if you want the experience, you can hear about Jesus, you can read the Bible, you can have all these other things. But until you have that experience and you know him and you know it's real because you just felt it, you just saw it, you just heard it, he wants to show up. The Bible even uh, promises it, I will manifest myself to you. He wants to. He wants you to know him, not some faraway thing or not something you read or hear from somebody else, a direct relationship with him. How do you get it? Well, you ask for it. What did Jazeel do? She prayed, I'll pray this way. And here's a prayer for you. Jesus, 
if you're real, if you're there, could you show me? Could you show up for me? If you're my Savior, if you're my Messiah, could you do it for me? And if you pray that with all of your heart, he'll answer. So if you want to do this right now, don't turn away, but right now, have an encounter with a living God who wants to come and be your all in all. If you have a sin problem, he'll take care of that. If you have a physical problem, he'll take care of that. If you're having panic attacks, he'll take care of that. All you have to do is come to him and ask. So let's do that. Bow your head with me. Let's pray a very simple prayer and let Jesus do all the rest. What he's done for others, he will do for you right now. Let's pray. Jesus. That's right. Just say his name. Say it out loud. Jesus, I come to you and I've seen what you've done for other people. I hear that you can bring me peace. I hear that you can forgive me, that you can heal me, that you can set me free. So Jesus, I ask right now that you come into my heart. I ask that you show up for me, that you be my Savior, my Messiah. And Jesus, if you do this, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer. Forgive me of anything I've done wrong. Set me free, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Father, for those who just prayed, I pray a baptism in your love. Let your love surround them, fill them to overflowing. Let them know that you are the Savior of the world. I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to let somebody else know. All you have to do is pick up a phone and call us, 1-800-700-7000. When you call, I've got something for you. It's absolutely free. It's called A New Day. And there's a CD teaching, what do you do now? How do you live the Christian life? What do Christians believe? Phone calls free, packets free, no financial obligation at all. All you have to do is call us. Uh, we'll be glad to send it to you. So call right now, 1-800-700-7000. Terry, over to you. Well, coming up later, a survival story after a plane's engine blows in midair. Hear how one man walked away from a fiery wreck. That's later on today's show. The 700 Club. Walmart is making life a bit better for its employees. The retail giant has launched a new program to help its workers pay for college. The company says employees interested in the program are required to contribute just $1 per day, while Walmart vows to pay for tuition, books, and other fees. The program is in partnership between Walmart and the Guild Education. The retailer estimates about 68,000 individuals could sign up for the program. Operation Blessing continues its work helping earthquake survivors in Mexico. A quake left Bernarda with nowhere to live and no way to provide for her children. The store where she worked was reduced to rubble, so Bernarda began making and selling food with her sister. Operation Blessing was in the area rebuilding homes, and when it heard of Bernarda's story, they decided to help. Teams installed a new and improved kitchen to help her grow her business and to make their products more safely and efficiently. You can always learn more about Operation Blessing by going to its website, ob.org. Gordon and Terry are coming back with more of today's 700 Club. It is coming up right after this. Mr. Wei tried to save every penny he earned. He even started begging his neighbors for cash. 
His two daughters needed help that he couldn't afford, and he knew that time was running out. Ting and Ja are daddy's girls. They're treasures, like precious pearls to me. The sisters dress alike, wear their hair the same, and give their father a lot of attention. But through the years, they've required a lot of attention themselves. Like their mother, both girls are deaf. The doctor said they started losing hearing in their inner ears when they got the flu, and it just got worse and worse. The two were always in danger. As much as I tried to draw pictures and explain things, they didn't understand. Once, Jia jammed some scissors into electric kettle and could have been electrocuted. I had to go everywhere with them so they wouldn't get lost or hit by a car. And there was only a small window of opportunity to help them before they could be permanently deaf. Mr. Wei saved up all his money and bought Ting and Jia second-hand hearing aids. But it wasn't long before the used hearing aids broke. So the girls went back to living in silence. Other kids laughed and pointed at them and called them dumb. I secretly wished that I could give them my ears. Even if each girl only got one, you'd be better than nothing. Mr. Wei only makes $15 a day, so he asked everyone he knew to loan him money to help his daughters here, but no one would. I felt like a fool. I had heard a little bit about God because my mom is a Christian, so I whispered in my heart, God of heaven, can you help me? Then, not even a week later, I heard about CBN. Mr. Wei contacted CBN, and soon Ting and Jia got what they call their new ears. Now my daughters can hear everything. We also paid for the sisters' language training. They're not in any danger, and no one laughs at them. Their personalities are so different. I know it was God who did this for us, and it was all right on time. Thank you to all the good-hearted people at CBN who gave my girls new ears. You changed their lives. Now I marvel when we're able to do something that is life-changing like this, how the expressions on the children's faces change, how their level of energy and their joy and just ability to live full out absolutely becomes expressive. We want to say thank you, 700 Club members, because what you've done for the Way family is just one family that you've touched, but there have been thousands, and you're doing it all around the world. It's an amazing thing to know that when a family is experiencing some kind of loss or some need that they simply can't meet because they just don't have enough money, you and I have an opportunity to step right into the midst of that and make a huge difference. These little girls will go to school, they will grow up, they will have jobs, they will have families, they will have friends, they will be accepted socially, and it's because of your kindness and generosity. For those of you who aren't 700 Club members, what does that look like? Well, it's a commitment of 65 cents a day, $20 a month. That doesn't seem like a lot, but you know when thousands of us link arms together, we can make a difference in the world. And I'm telling you about a general membership. Some of you might already be 700 Club members. Go up to the next club level, will you? When you call our toll-free number, they're happy to walk you through what the club levels and your options are. Our number is toll-free. It's 1-800-700-7000. And by the way, when you call today making whatever pledge you determine to make, would you do it using Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. It means your bank does all the work. I think it's pretty wonderful. You don't have to have envelopes or stamps or even remember to do anything. It's all done for you. You can stop it whenever you want. But it does save us some administrative costs so that even more of your gift can go right into the lives of children like the way children that you just saw. Our way of saying thank you for using Pledge Express is to send you these Power for Life teachings. You're going to get one of them every month. We think they'll be a great blessing to you, as well as a reminder that you are making a difference every single day somewhere in the world if you've joined the 700 Club. So do that now. Gordon? Well, up next, first responders arrive on the scene of a plane crash. 
I would have never said that anybody would have walked away from it. He was walking over to us, which I thought was miraculous. He just looked like he just walked out of the flames. Meet the miracle man who walked away from this crash and hear his incredible story of survival. Paul's prop plane was about 500 feet in the air when it burst into a fireball. Rescuers assumed that nobody could have survived. And then they saw Chris walking right through the flames. November 150 pop-up, taking off runway 17 for the pattern for it, called 13. It was 7.45 a.m. Chris Hall was taking his new plane for a test flight to the Brownwood Regional Airport in Texas. Sweet little flight, no wind. And as I was making my descent, I felt a little bump in the seat. And I know Holy Spirit said, Chris, you lost power. I reached down to shove the throttle forward to go full power and nothing. I had nothing. The engine went quiet. Chris tried to restart the engine, but it wouldn't turn over. What he didn't know was that his fuel pump had failed. When I dipped below the horizon and I realized I was gonna crash, I said out loud, here we go. And I was talking to the Lord. Chris's friend Floyd was on the tarmac when he saw the explosion in the distance. It was at least four to 500 feet in the air, huge fireball. As I began to run towards the crash site, I was also praying. And I said, you're not, Chris is not finished. You're not finished with Chris. A brown one, down one, one. Hi, uh, we're at Brown Regional Airport. There's an aircraft that has uh, gone into the ground. EMS Stephen Stone responded to the call. We saw the black smoke coming up. I would have never said that anybody would have walked away from it. When I pushed the door open, I heard glass break, I heard metal bend. That's when everything went orange. He was walking over to us, which I thought was miraculous. He just looked like he just walked out of the flames. Chris was quickly transported to the nearest hospital. He called his wife, Dot, from the ambulance. He said, I crushed my plane and I'm not hurt very bad. His ambulance driver grabbed the phone away from him and said, Miss Hall, Chris is hurt really bad and we're gonna be care flighting him to Parkland Hospital. As Dot rushed to the hospital, she called their son. We were both praying, you know, that no weapon formed against Chris will prosper and that he will live and not die and that his body would be totally healed. When Dot arrived, doctors were preparing to intubate Chris and admit him to ICU. His head was swollen twice the size and he was burned really, really bad. So to see Chris like that was very hard. She said, hi, babe. And I was just like, it was like a voice from heaven. I was that happy that she was there. Chris was stabilized and found to have no broken bones or internal injuries. The concern was the amount of skin grafts required to heal the second and third degree burns, covering over 20% of his body. The doctors took me out in the hallway and I asked them, what are we looking at? They said, you're gonna be here for months. I just thought, God's bigger than that. And so I just took off by myself down the hallway just said, Lord, you know, what, what do you say about this? And I just felt like he spoke to me and said, uh, two weeks, you'll be here for two weeks. Dot, their sons, family members, and several close friends prayed for Chris's full recovery. We would lay our hands on Chris in ICU and we would say, Chris, be healed. Oh, it felt awesome to have people agreeing in prayer. I was laying there. The only thing that I had was the presence of God. I didn't have anything else. Two weeks to the day, doctors permitted Chris to leave. It felt amazing to me to know that God had heard my prayers. 
As we were driving up the driveway, I lost it. I knew I was home. And that was, it still touches me. After three months of treatment, Chris was back on his feet. Today, he and his wife Dot minister at churches around the country and share their story of answered prayer. There's nothing Chris can't do today that he's always been able to do. There's no question uh, but what the hand of God was on Chris. Believe God before the fire. Don't wait till something like this has to happen to get you to believe. Boy, there is a word for all of us. Believe God before the fire so that when the fire happens, you can walk through it knowing your dad walks through it with you. Boy, that is the story of tremendous survival, healing, and a great word that God has allowed to go forth from that healing to the multitudes. So I hope you're hearing it today. I don't know what your prayer need is, but I know that there are many, many of you who are watching us today who have needs in various aspects of your life. And God knows your name. You know, we talked about that earlier. Is your name carved in the palm of his hand? And so he knows what you need. But we want to encourage your faith further with some additional reports. Gordon, this is Andrea who lives in Las Vegas, Nevada. She injured her right shoulder playing badminton with her granddaughter 10 years ago. Well, recently that pain became intense. And then one day while watching this program, she heard you say, you have problems with your right shoulder. It's a variety of things, damage from an injury, damage to the ligaments, damage to the joint, damage to the nerve. Her pain left immediately. She was completely healed. She can now spend time with her grandchildren and she is absolutely pain free. Here's another one. Rand from San Diego, California had balance problems last December. It became so bad he went to the emergency room. The problem continued and then one day he was watching the 700 Club uh, just this past May. But Terry said, you have a really unstable walk because of a condition you have. Well, Rand claimed the word and then he got up and began to walk without any imbalance or any dizziness and he's had no trouble since. And God is our very present help in time of trouble. You can rely on him. You can rest in him. If you have the faith to believe your sins are forgiven, you have all the faith you need to believe for healing, for rescue, uh, for every human need. He wants to supply it. Now, here's the key. You don't have to bargain with him. You don't have to beg him. When you do those things, all it's showing is how much you don't believe. <laughs> so here's what you need to do. You need to look to the cross, look to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. Now, he said on the cross, it is finished. That means he paid everything. He fixed this broken world. And by his stripes, we are redeemed and we are healed. So look to him. Don't look at your own faith. Don't look at what you'll do for God if he does these things for you. Don't look at any of that. Look to Jesus and realize what he accomplished on the cross is for you. And all you have to do is enter into that. Now, here's the prayer for you. And Jesus gave us this prayer. That we would pray that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, in heaven, there's nobody sick. There's nobody lonely. There's nobody poor. There aren't any tears. That's God's will. So let's pray right now for his will to be done in your life in your life, as it is in heaven, let it be done on earth for you. Lord, we lift those who have needs. We lift those who need healing in their bodies. We lift families that need restoration. We lift finances that need. You supply every need according to your riches and glory. So Lord God Almighty, stretch forth your hand to do miracles Miracles, Lord God. We ask for an abundance of miracles for your children today. Let your stripes, let that healing come to your children. For we ask it 
in Jesus' name. There's someone with a burning scalp condition. I don't know if it was from uh, some fire or, or what, what it is, but God is just doing a tremendous miracle for your skin. Uh, and all of that pain is leaving you right now in Jesus' name. You just felt it lift off of you. You've been restored. You've been healed. You've been set free. There's someone else you've uh, been diagnosed with a bulging vein uh, artery in your, in your brain. And God's able to restore the artery walls. He's able to restore everything concerning that. And that headache just left you now. In Jesus' name, be healed, be made whole. Terry? There's someone else. You have a wound in your arm that is not healing, and there's a lot of concern about infection setting in there. God's going to right now begin to heal that arm. It will be completely whole. Someone else, you have a very odd scenario, like you've, for some reason, you've lost all of the, your ability to taste, like your taste buds have just been turned off. Well, God's changing that for you. You're going to be able to enjoy eating again. Just receive that gift today as that process begins. Someone else with deep pain in your abdomen from gallstones and uh, a gallbladder con condition, and God has just healed that. He's taken away all the pain. All that infection, all the stones now in Jesus' name be gone and be made whole. Someone else suffering from rosacea and the, there are other side effects from that as well, but God is healing you of it all. Receive that today in Jesus' name. And someone else with nerve damage in the eyelid above the right eye, God's healing you right now in Jesus' name. Open your eyes and receive it. Well, if you have had a healing, give us a call. Let us know, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations.